you say for me ethical living and Ayurveda are are connected because Mm -hmm. the deepest levels of understanding Ayurveda is knowing that you know we're connected with the earth and the animals in a way that's not you know us above them or Mm -hmm. anyone as being the sort of you know we are the dominant species on the earth at the moment Mm -hmm. but we are no greater than them in the way that in terms of what this world deserves so I think there's um it's it is complicated sometimes and I think we have to remember also that Ayurveda you know it's like 4,000 years old Mm -hmm. and the way in which milk and um even meat was utilized back way back then in India and the relationship that they had with the cows and with the animals there and this this whole uh, principles around ghee and the way that you know very minimal dairy but really almost the cows were worshipped it was Mm -hmm. they were hailed higher than we were yeah there was a different relationship and a different way that the earth was treated at that time Mm -hmm. and you know you go back to evolutionary with all the tribes there was a different relationship with understanding um any sort of consumption and any taking was done with such a different energy and with a respect and out of pure sort of only when it was really necessary Mm -hmm. and the world has changed and I think it's it's really important that we really bring current relevance again as a lens to what Mm -hmm. we're looking at here as ancient principles yeah and I always say you know what with with people and with their their life and the way that they've been brought up having you know very childhood patterns of what you eat and what's you know normal meat and two veg is the very british thing mm-hmm. to have yeah. your meat and your potatoes and your beef, <clears throat> whatever. yeah um we've got to remember we're working with with people and lifetime of patterns mm-hmm. so the more important thing i believe in ayurveda is sort of making conscious choice and that is you have a huge amount of understanding and experience in knowing the very dark side of, sort of, mer- of the dairy and the meat industries and things like that mm-hmm. and so you're making a conscious decision about why you are making the choices you are and if someone out there has a certain lifestyle and they've grown up with a very sort of you know meat-based upbringing for them making a little change to a couple of days a week not having you know not having any meat on their plate and that's a conscious decision because they want to make a difference mm-hmm. and if that helps tip the scales a little bit then that's great and that's that sort of step one and I think within your practice as a coach you know your morals and you know what you will recommend and what you feel is on your you know aligned with your principles and that's the thing at the start of the session you just say just letting you know this is my beliefs and you know if you want to trial something that has different sort of input then that's fine I will recommend you to someone else Mm -hmm. But the whole concept of Ayurveda aligns with understanding karma. And for me personally, mm-hmm. we have to know that everything we do, I've, I'm a vegetarian, I'm, you know, vegan sometimes and sometimes not, depending on where I am. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I think at the beginning, I would feel very guilty about the fact that, oh, I couldn't go full vegan or, you know, and that was, oh God, okay. So that was a very negative pattern. So mm-hmm. then I really tried to just empower it. Like, what are all the positive things I can do? What, how can I make, you know, learn some more amazing recipes that are vegan and get myself mm-hmm. really excited rather than feeling like I'm punishing myself. Yeah. So yeah, I think to be honest, if anyone can make a decision to eat a little bit more consciously and just go on that pathway of learning and discovering, that's great. Yeah. And everyone has a different starting point. So mm-hmm. Yeah, and but I really do believe living ethically and Ayurveda are going to go hand in hand. That's yeah. my personal view. And I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I think I think I mean I. That's also why sometimes I felt, in a way, that sometimes it was hypocritical and just not all, like a little bit schizo nearly. Like, how can you say one thing here and then the other thing there? It just doesn't go together, you know. And I think that we we need to understand. But I mean, for me, I mean, I would be like. Already now I say to people like, yeah, I'm studying and I want to become a vegan Ayurvedic coach. Like it's, you yeah. know, it'll be very clear. Like, I mean, it's no way that I'm going to, I'm going to describe bone broth to anybody. Um, but, you know, I think that, but it was, it, it is definitely something that also kept me a little bit from 
Ayurveda, and I know that some, maybe some of my listeners will also a bit be a bit like, yeah, how, even my my um, <clears throat> my teacher uh, David Live, <clears throat> he's the founder of my method, and he the first thing he said like, ah, vegan vegan Ayurvedic, it's what the world needs, you know, because he was also really like, it's yeah. too much of this non-vegan and even non-vegetarian stuff that I I think is um, exactly what you're saying, like it it is so ethical to mm. to be um to be living in in line with nature and in you know like with with thinking of nature uh and mother earth you know like and and be good to be good to our mother you know and i think Um, when we talk about subtle essences in ayurveda and we it is it does recommend a mainly vegetarian diet yeah and the sort of non-vegan aspects that you hear lots of as i know you'll be very tired of hearing it's about ghee because of Mm -hmm. It, that's a very Indian cultural thing and there is a whole spiritual principle around that again yeah. coming from the ancient days of how yeah. how that worked back in India mm-hmm. um but the principles of Ayurveda say that you know having all these plant-based foods and really fresh organic yeah that has the most prana it has the most life force mm-hmm. in the food yeah and although you know it has to outline some of the implications of eating meat in terms of the energetics and what it balances because people will be eating it. And it's mm-hmm. important to know that, okay, we don't recommend that you eat much meat, mm-hmm. you know, or ideally be as vegetarian as you can be or vegan in your case. Yeah. Um, but also when you're assessing it as a consultant, as a, you know, when you're there with a client and they're eating steak or if they're eating chicken or fish, yeah. The training that we undertake has to teach us about the implications of what that does, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what's caused the person to be there, and it's part of their story as much as mm-hmm. vegetables and the grains and their their whole yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. So it's Ayurveda explains a lot of what the effects are in terms of the doshas, um, because it has to, because we have to have the information, mm-hmm. because that's how we get a great treatment plan. But then what you do next, that's up to you. Yeah, but I think it's also, I mean. Even with my, you know, I did a plant-based course as well uh, of plant-based food. And uh, and also when I'm coaching anybody on plant-based food, of course, you know, like my ethics are within me, but, you know, I don't take them with me on every, you know what I mean? Like if people just want to know their diet and they want to change their diet, I'm, I'm, I'll happily help them because it makes me happy anyway. I mean, I love, I'm a chef as well. And I love that, that part. So, so it's not always about like throwing your ethics on the plate as well. But of course, for me, like I, when when Shona was sort of saying, like, yeah, Ayurveda is not about ethics. The first thing in my mind was like, but I am, you know. So so in that sense, we we do need to navigate a way of how yeah. that then works when we start when I would start to coach. And I really like what you said as well about, you know, you were kind of mentioning like, yeah, you know, people have limited views, and how do we sort of you know navigate with that in in the world? around us <clears throat> which is is not going to be the same as what we think you know mm. or what we believe um totally and as a coach it's the responsibility is not about it's like we said right at the start it's not about getting everyone to become the same it's about getting them to become the best version of themselves mm-hmm. all things considered for their life yeah. and that will look totally different and it's difficult because yes we will always have our story behind us which will you know influence a lot of what we say and a lot of our you know the way we even speak and the way we explain things and what we highlight Mm -hmm. that will always have a little bit of our own unique color which makes every consultant and every um Ayurvedic coach different yeah it's it's so important for for us when we're trying to support someone else to really be there for them that's that's the only responsibility what do you need and what can I do just to help you even if it's only five ten percent amazing yeah. like anything yeah. that so it's um yeah trying to not trying to not let ourselves get in the way too much yeah exactly um, yeah yeah and understanding that it does sometimes but that's that's human nature so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it is when you work with people yeah, yeah totally. of course no it's, it's good I mean it's I think it's for me and and specifically also I think the audience listening to this is it's also finding that healthy balance of like yeah, of course, I'm not going to th- throw it in their face. But at the same time, I am who I am. I'm not going to hide behind my, no. you know, who, who I am. Like my ethics are important. The animals are my everything. And so that is part of who I am. And that's part of this part is how I operate in everything. I mean, even 
how I brush my teeth is all, <laughs> yeah in the morning I always said it, it it starts here already with my yeah. bamboo toothbrush and my vegan yeah. toothpaste yeah it's you know it, it's uh, it's a whole it's a whole picture no mm-hmm. very very good thank you so much for that um that was really good to to have you know your feedback there um and another thing I wanted to uh, to see like uh, to ask you as well because while, while I have you here uh, another thing I want to throw at you is um so another friend of mine she is actually an Ayurveda coach and she was mentioning to me like yeah you know what it is with Ayurveda Ayurveda is very good with the trees but not so much with the forest and do you understand what I'm saying so in, yeah. this, in the in the in the sense like yeah you know it can be a bit overwhelming I think or it's a little bit like yeah the but like, how do we see the the forest when you know maybe like can, can you can you can you do you see where I'm going and like can we talk a little bit about how do you feel about that? I think I understand. So my interpretation of that is that we are focusing in Ayurveda very much on a specific problem. Say whether it's someone who has really bad stomach problems or mm. someone who is suffering with insomnia someone whose skin keeps breaking out because they're really stressed or whatever reason so that's the tree Mm -hmm. because that's what we're focusing on nurturing and trying to save that tree in that aspect yeah but my understanding is then the forest is looking at the big picture it's looking at how we're entwined with the entire universe and our our place in this world and our our life as a whole Mm -hmm. is that what you take? yeah i think so it is what i take from it as well Yeah. yeah yeah um And again, I think that is, it's to do with, I think a lot of people don't have space to think about the forest because Mm -hmm. you're so caught up on trying to save the tree because like, (laughs) you know, that's the problem right now. This tree's dying. Like that part of me is suffering. Mm -hmm. And so that, that pain pulls us to making that a priority. Yeah. And what I think is really lovely and what I've seen in a lot of the teachers around me is the more you've worked on Ayurveda yourself, you've got the energy and the clarity to step back away from your problems that are pulling you down, which are, you know, it's pretty hard to do. Mm. But when you've got that energy and you've worked on yourself, or even before that, for some people, you can step back and you can look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. And yes, we don't have to necessarily, we don't have to wait to be perfect before we can help the rest of the world and help others. Mm -hmm but it definitely helps if you've got the energy to be able to do that yeah. because otherwise we're just wrapped up in ourselves and wrapped up in that, in that world, the small, very zoomed in version. And, um, but it's, a, it's a part of Ayurveda that I don't think a lot of people initially will go to because it's a bit too big and it doesn't seem very, very relevant. Mm-hmm. But those who are seekers and those people who want to have, you know, oh, how does this all tie into the universe yeah. and the stars yeah. around me? You can get that. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the greatest ways of, of getting that perspective is just to try and help other people because it immediately steps us out of our little world. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And that's what I love about what you're doing. You are hmm. You are constantly making an effort, although it'd be very easy to sit within your world and work just on you. You're making an effort to influence others and to try. And that immediately just gives you a little bit of space. So the more things we can do like that, it gives us perspective, um, support our own health so that we've got the energy to do that. Exactly. Then I think we start to be able to see the forest. Yeah. Um, No, that's um, a beautiful, that's a beautiful way of looking at it as well. Definitely. I think that that's a really yeah no that's a really good um no I think so too and I think that that's also again personally you know it's again individually uh it's different for everyone of course Mm -hmm. you know because you know what you're saying as well if someone is only you know focused on the stomach but then that also kind of in the bigger picture changes everything else then you know then it is and the tree and the forest in a way i guess so i totally i mean in ayurveda especially the stomach that's the yeah that's part of the that's the root of all disease and yeah the root of yeah. everything yeah and um yeah yeah i think it's but you know yoga meditation being on these programs having a, a great teacher all yeah. of these little things are basically trying to help us to change our views mm-hmm. and trying to take us out of just obsessing over the minutiae and the little annoyances and the little things that are bothering us Mm -hmm. and the more you protect yourself with an amazing community with an amazing 
hopefully even trying to bring some aspects into your job of whatever you feel your purpose is. 